Awesome. Well, thank you everybody so much for joining us. Um, we hope that this will be informative, helpful, um, and that you can go on and share this information with folks in your departments or your friends. Um, we will share the recording of the presentation and the PowerPoint so you can easily just, you know, spread this like wildfire. Um, great. So with that, I think we'll just get into it and, you know, we'll make space for questions as we go and there will be time also for us to try out the stuff that we're learning today. So Andre, go ahead and smash that next slide button. Great. So um, basically what we're here to do today is to uh, talk to one another about kind of the basics of how to talk to one another about joining the union. Um, so organizing boils down to asking a question and there are five basic principles here that we're going to go over. So do folks want to volunteer to read out loud so it doesn't feel like I'm just yelling at you the entire time. We can read aloud the points that come up as they, as they go. Does that sound good? No one joins the unit unless individually approach and ask to join. If we don't ask them, it's the same as making up their mind for them. Right, great, yes, thank you so much. So this is like, feels kind of basic, but basically, you know, no one thinks of joining the union unless they're approached and asked to join. And that join can be as simple, that ask can be as simple as announcing the union exists for some people. For some people that's enough, but for most others, we need to actually approach them individually and um, engage them in a conversation. And that, that conversation usually ends with actually explicitly asking them to join the union. Otherwise, you know, by not asking someone to join, you're basically saying they're not interested, you're assuming that they're not gonna join and then they won't join. Um, so that's step number one. All right, next. So this is, the more people who are asked to join, the more people who will join. Great, yes, this one is fairly explanatory, self-explanatory. All right, next one. Uh, you cannot get hundreds of workers to join the union unless you have hundreds asking. Yes, exactly. So the nature of these kinds of conversations, it means that you know we can't just have a dedicated team of like five recruiters going around and asking everyone at UVA to join the union. Um, recruitment works best with people you know, with people you work alongside, with people ideally whom you share issues and work circumstances and workspaces with. And the more people you get asking, the more people you get joining. All right, next. You cannot get hundreds of people, or you cannot get hundreds asking people to join without strong organizing committees. Great. So that being said, there is power in organization and in a kind of centralized plan and people to coordinate asking. And so organizing committees are where you basically get together with other folks in your workspace or departments to strategize about the best place, best ways, the best methods to approach systematically organizing um, your coworkers. And we'll get into that today as well. All right, next. Number five, you cannot have strong functioning organizing committees unless people are meeting regularly, making plans, working with lists, doing charts, taking assignments, and reporting. Great. So this point basically says that the actual conversation is the culmination of a fair amount of preparation um, that ideally you're doing in coordination with other people in your department. So you won't have to do it alone. Um, but knowledge is power. You want to go into these conversations armed with information about the folks you're talking to, their position in your department, uh, what they can bring to the union if they join, and the likelihood they have to say yes or no or any number of answers when you ask. Great, so let's go to the next slide. So uh, it starts with charts, which are fun and uh, engaging, as we all know. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, my experience helping to organize graduate students in the history department, and we're kind of moving on to faculty now. So we basically highly recommend, and we'll send out a template with how to set up these charts for each of your own departments. We highly recommend getting together with other graduate students, uh, workers, staff in your immediate department sitting down and coming up with a list of everyone in your department who gets a paycheck from the university. So um, that, that's information that the union can help you uh, get. We basically have lists sorted by department that we can help you populate or you can also do it yourselves by just, you know, you, you guys know your departments best. So in history, basically we listed all the graduate students and we assigned them with a rating system from most likely to be sympathetic to least likely to be sympathetic or maybe even hostile to being asked to join the union. Um, and we basically met, are still meeting uh, roughly once a month to check in with one another and hold one another accountable to following up on the chart. 
the master chart where we all sign up to talk to certain people who are friends with or we have a working relationship with. And the chart is basically a way to make sure that you're approaching organizing systematically by targeting people who are more likely to be amenable to these conversations first, so you're not wasting your time, and that you're targeting people who are in unique positions to help imp like recruit in the future. So you want that grad student who's really involved in department organizing, or you want that staff member who gets to move around the university a lot and interacts with a lot of other workers, or you want that really kind of uh, person who's really good at art or any kind of, you know, stuff that can help the union. You want those people on your team first. And then once you have more of a presence in a department, you get to kind of leverage those numbers to help people who may be more intractable or stubborn uh, join the union later on, because that's often a powerful selling point by saying, well, you know, most grad students have already joined. Um, these are more people you can stand with. We can make you feel safer, more protected. And we'll get into the details of how to have those conversations later on. But definitely some system of organizing your recruitment, highly recommend and we'll you know, provide you with the resources to help set that up. All right, next slide. This is still me. No, I'm going to pass it on now to Stephen. All right, thanks, Crystal. All right, so the most difficult thing about getting people to join the union, since we're here to talk about asking them, is how do we have the conversation? So does someone want to read this slide? Uh, the organizing conversation is a systematic way of making the ask of a potential member. It involves six steps. Each step builds on the previous steps. To be successful, we have to do each step well. This conversation is 70% listening, 30% talking. Ask lots of follow-up questions and repeat back to them what they say. I hear you say, can you tell me more about that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is one of the hardest things about having a conversation um, with another person in general, but especially about the union. We need to listen to what each other has to say because while we know our coworkers best, we're all individuals. And so we all have different problems and different circumstances that we want addressed. And one of the things that is so great about being in a union, and this is what we're trying to communicate, is that um, our, the issues of our members are the issues of the union. So we need to listen and hear what they're saying first before we start giving our pitch for why they should join. Okay, next slide. So the, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest obstacles to having this conversation is how do you start? Like, how do you do all of that? Someone wanna read this slide? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what do you care about? What's important to you? What's your story? What got you into this job? How long have you been in this job? What do you like about it? Awesome. Yeah, so I think this last question is something worth focusing on because oftentimes when we're talking about organizing a workplace, uh, it's centered around all of the problems. But it's important to first, in, uh, in beginning the conversation, to first ask why it matters that we're doing this at all. Importantly, for a lot of people, it matters because there are parts of our job that we like and that we want to preserve. And so talking, getting the other person talking about what they like about their job can help motivate them to do more in the union. It's also important uh, to remind them, you know, why they got into this position in the first place. Okay, um, so I think at this point, um, I'm going to hand it off to Evan. Cool, thanks, Stephen. Yes, <clears throat> so we've sort of initiated this conversation. We either know this person, maybe we don't know, but at the very least we're getting to know them and knowing what they care about their job, um, you know, how they view their position either within their department or maybe in the university as a whole. And then once you start feeling comfortable, right, like where you feel like you know them or to some degree know their, you know, where they're at right now, this is the part that we would call agitation or I guess in the right way, it's like getting them a little angry or at the very least getting them to question um, or realize like what sort of issues do they have? Like why is the department operating the way it is? 
Um, would anybody care to read this slide real fast? Get their issues. If you could change three things about your job tomorrow, what would you change? What's causing those issues? Who's the person who could change that? Why haven't the people in power fixed that? Yeah, so this is almost like a counterpoint kind of to um, Stephen's earlier slide. This is where we're going to start figuring out like, okay, so this is, these are the things you like about your job. These are the things you want to keep. What about the things that you think could do better? Like you've already established you like your job or you like what you do. Like how can it be better? How can you do your job better? Uh, how could you be more well compensated? Um, with this slide or with these sorts of questions, uh, it's best to do open-ended questions. So for example, um, say someone is talking about their wage, like they haven't gotten a raise um, in a while, or they, maybe they're making below the living wage in Charlottesville and have a family and it's really not, um, their current salary is really not adequate. Um, so maybe if like, you know, maybe you can just ask them like, well, you know, if they're like complaining about that. So it's like, well, what do you think you could do to change that? Like maybe no one's ever asked them that. Like, well, I couldn't ask for a raise. And it's like, well, what could you do to potentially get a raise? Or how could you, um, how could you work with other people who are in a similar situation to get that raise? Um, this is sort of to get people to sort of think about a little bit outside of um, what they're currently dealing with. And like I said earlier, like trying to maybe like get them a little irritated, a little angry, a little agitated. Um, this is supposed to kind of engage them and get their imagination going. And it always helps to go deeper and deeper into their issues, like as it says in the power in this slide, um, you know, not just what the issue is, but like how it affects your personal life. Like, are you more stressed because of this certain thing? Is it affecting your relationships, your friendships? Are you not getting enough sleep? Um, things like that. Really figure out, like, because we know our our work lives and our personal lives are very much intertwined, and they affect each other. So that's always to get good to get that information. Uh, next slide. So we've gotten to know them. Maybe they're a little pissed, or at the very least, you know a little bit more about the issues they're facing or the things they want to change. And now at this point, you kind of offer uh, a solution, right? And this is what we'd call like sort of the vision. Um, so laying out the vision of how those things could be changed. Uh, would anybody like to read this slide? Thank you. Okay. Um, get them to believe. Present a vision for change. Give them the plan for changing this issue. Be specific. The core of the vision, you and your coworkers standing together can change this. Yeah, so this is, I think, probably what's at the heart of the, um, of the conversation is that, you know, you've been presented with sort of these issues that someone has and how, how they want to change, or the fact that they want to change them for the better. And this is where you say, like, well, we have, we think we have a good way of doing that. And that is by uh, banding together. I think that is the strength of a union is each other, right? And the fact that we have um, lots of people on our side banding together to protect each other, that is where our power is. And I think that's how you sort of convince, not, con yeah, I guess convince them or at least just show them, like, this is how we think things can change. Um, you could try going to HR, you could try talking to your boss, you know, all by yourself, but at the end of the day, we know a lot of times that will probably not work. But if you imagine, you know, saying you have dozens of people doing the same thing, hundreds of people advocating for you uh, and with you, then that can actually lead to substantial, um, substantial change for the better. Um, and so that is, yeah, so that's sort of the vision, and I'll say that especially with these two slides, um, and this was something taught at another meeting, is that the, the two main tools that either your boss, your employer, the institution you work at have, has for employers or employees is fear and isolation. Um, these two are, these two slides show that the way to counter those is through either anger or hope. I'd say, I'd say anger is a very motivating force, so I like to go with anger, but anger and um, unity, right? So working together solidarity, that sort of thing. Um, so as long as we keep that in mind, I think, and present that sort of view of how change can happen, then I think that's a very strong force. And I think with that, we're going back to, I don't know, I don't know who's next. <laughs> it's me, I'm next. 
So we've had these great conversations now with some of our coworkers, some of the people that we've gotten to know in our departments, in our places of work. Here's where we get to the real crunch time, right? We've gotten a sense of the issues, got a sense of who they are. We've planted the seed of like, what can we do about this? Now we've got to close out and we've got to ask, right? So if you remember back at the beginning of the PowerPoint we talked about, you're not going to get people to join the union if you've got people asking them. This is exactly where that comes in. Um, so a volunteer to read this slide, anybody? Get them to join. Call the question. Frame the choice. Are you ready to stand with your coworkers? Parentheses, join the union. Um, hyperlink. <laughs> Wait for them to answer before saying anything again. Let the long pause happen. So I really want to break this slide into two points. Right? First of all, this, this bit before the link, right? Calling the question and framing the choice and that yellow text. Are you ready to stand with your coworkers, right? You don't have to use those exact words, but something that connects with what your conversation just was, right? So this, we just came off this idea of vision and building and working together and having solidarity. Work that in there, if that was connecting with them. If you were really connecting with the agitation, ask them, are you ready to make that change that you wanted to see, right? Are you ready to do something about that? But make it a question and put that sort of burden in a sense, put that agency actually onto the other person. Steven has put in the chat, are you ready to fight for a living wage with me, right? That's excellent, right? So make sure that these are personal, personable questions as well. And the next thing is to wait for them to answer before you say anything again and let that long pause happen. So I think that a lot of times, um, you know, I've experienced this. I'm sure this is a fairly common experience. You try to ask someone to do something for you. And then as soon as there's any hesitation, you immediately start walking that back, right? We don't want to do that. We don't want to give anybody a chance to have us walk back our ask before they've even committed to anything, right? So if they say no, then we can maybe walk it back a little bit. If they say no, then we can say, well, then what if you just joined, joined, joined as a solidarity member? What if you just signed our petition? What if you just sort of retweeted us a little bit, right? But we don't want to start by saying, join the union. Or actually, no, just do these other things instead. That's, that's not so great, right? We want to stick to the biggest action first, right? And if there's that long pause and they're really unsure, then we can start to walk it back a little bit. If they do say yes, though, right? If we've given them the chance to say yes and they do say yes, then we can add it on as further ways to get involved, right? So we can sort of say, would you like to join the union? Yes. Ooh, here's new things that you can do as well. And in fact, we're actually gonna have a little bit of a demonstration real quick. So I'm gonna turn it over to Steven for just a moment. And we're gonna do a little bit of demonstration so everybody can see what it is that we've been talking about so far. All right, thanks, Andre. So uh, I think Ida's gonna be the, uh, the skeptical worker. Is that right? It is, I am. Okay, skeptical worker, right. So at this point in the conversation, you've gotten to know what they care about. You're commiserating over, you know, the shit that's gone wrong in your workplace. You've sort of inspired them to think about this, to get to the point where they're like, you know, thinking about doing something outside of their normal routine. And you've, you've gotten to the point where you're ready to ask. And so here we go, Ida, are you ready to fight with me and your other coworkers for a living wage? I mean, I like, I like the idea, but like, that is a really big target to put on my back and I can't, I don't, I can't afford to not have my stipend. So that's, I don't know. That's a lot. I totally get it. I mean, I was afraid when I uh, first started joining the union too. Um, it's worth thinking about. It's worth keeping in mind. And I definitely want to keep talking about this in the future, but for right now, would you, sign our petition? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. I'll send you the link right now. And if you want, we can do it together. Uh, I can talk you through some of the things that are on there. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so in that just brief interaction, a couple things happened. I asked, and then I waited, and it got a little awkward because Ida is not, you know, super into it. 
So they had to think about it and that's okay. We want to give them the time and space to think about it because part of joining a union is taking a step. Um, so definitely let them wait. But that's not the only kind of interaction you're going to have. When you get to this point in the conversation, you might be talking to someone who's really excited. They're ready to go. So I think it'd be helpful to hopefully be helpful to just go through real quick what that kind of conversation could look like. Yeah. So I think, is Andre going to be our, um, our sympathetic worker? Absolutely. Awesome. So Andre, are you ready to fight with me and your coworkers for a living wage? Absolutely I am, Stephen. Where do I sign up? <laughs> awesome. Well, it's funny that you should ask because I came prepared. Um, now, obviously, in the age of Zoom, I can't give you a physical form, but I've got the link right here. I'll send it to you. Um, if you want, we can fill it out together right now. Does that sound good? That sounds really great because technologically, I have some issues, but if you can help me out, that would be really fantastic. Yeah, definitely. And you're going to have questions filling this out. Everyone does. I'd like to be there to help you with it. So, Steve, I wanna, what else oh, can yeah. I do? <laughs> you know, what if, what if just joining the union, I really, you know, you've got me really fired up. What else can I get involved with? Oh, just you wait. So we have a Slack um, that we use to communicate with our workers. I don't know if you've used Slack before, but I'd be happy to show you how to use it if you haven't. Um, all of the issues we've talked about, all the things that we both care about, that you care about, um, there are different issues on our channel. Uh, we have different channels on the Slack for them. So be happy to put you in contact with those people, get you set up right away. Awesome, thanks Steven, let's go fill out that form. Let's do it. All right, so this is the easier interaction, obviously because they said yes. But what's important about the conversation where the person says yes, is that you don't stop there. So the first thing you wanna do is have them fill out the form, the membership form right there with you. And the reason that that's important is not just because forms are complicated and people have questions about them, but because, you know, signing a form by yourself in isolation gives you time to think about it, to maybe doubt your decision. We want to get them signed up right away, right now. And the second thing that's important is that they're signing up to join a union for some specific reasons, meaning that oftentimes people want to do stuff right away. And even if they don't, they want to start talking to people right away that are interested in you know, helping to design t-shirts or um, put together actions or, you know, do some research on the board of visitors or what have you. And so what you want to do as a member already is to help put them in contact with people who've already been doing that work right away. So those are the two most important things to do if they say yes. Get them signed up right away and put them in touch with people who are already working on the stuff that they care about. So we gave you guys a little bit of a chance to see a little bit of a demonstration in action. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into a little bit of a breakout room session, um, you know, group some people together, and we're going to try to walk through some of these sorts of conversational pieces just for a few minutes, uh, get everybody a chance to sort of get it uh, in their mouths and get it, get it feeling sort of organic. And then we'll come back to the main room and keep going through a little bit more of this presentation. So Crystal, whenever you are ready, go ahead and throw us into our breakout rooms. So I um, hope everybody had a good time in the breakout rooms. So we're going to go ahead and advance just a little bit more. So here's a fun one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of like take over here. I'm going to read this slide myself. Um, inoculation, right? Getting them ready. So after someone has already joined the union, after they've agreed to join, right? What kind of challenges will we face in dealing with these issues? And here we want to be addressing any fears or obstacles that our new union member might foresee by going back to that vision that we established together, right? So this is when you need to have that sort of conversation with somebody about what might be happening, right? Make sure that they understand that while we're working together and trying to do something really incredible together, we need to be prepared for things to not be rosy all the time, right? Um, administration may ignore us, our bosses, may not like necessarily that we're becoming outspoken union members. And we need to be able to have that conversation with people. And so as we continue going through a little bit more, 
you're going to be talking about how to have this sort of inoculating conversation. Right? And then next steps, right? So now that we've had this conversation, we've gotten them to join our union, we've sort of made them a little bit aware. Um, now we got to talk about what's, what comes next. So can you talk to your coworkers? Can you come to a meeting? What can you do to work on this week, right? So we really want to make sure that people know that they have agency. One of the whole reasons why we have a union is because we want to be taking more command of our workplaces and we want to be making the decisions. So make a plan for this person and for yourself even to take action in the next week. And this is so good, so crucial. Set a time to, set a time to follow up, right? Even, even if you or they haven't done what you said you would do, having that follow-up just to check in again is so essential for making everybody feel like they're a part of this community that we're building together, right? So uh, just having that sort of understanding of what can be done next, very, very important. Okay, I'm gonna take over from here. And we'll just summarize a lot of what we've been saying and I will walk you guys through how to prep for all of the things that we've been saying. So we'll go into a little bit more of a deep dive now. So setting yourself up to succeed. The first part of that is something that someone can click for me. Great. Does someone want to read that for me, please? Always have an application and a pen ready or the link to join. Thank you. Yes, only one of these applies in COVID time. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing that's really important about this is that you always want, you want to set yourself up, like hope that you are going to get to the point where they will be in the union. So you want to have everything on hand that you need, whatever that is. And in this case, the link is the first thing when you get to that point. And the next thing is be organized and prepared. So this one takes a little more work. Um, this is about thinking ahead of time who you're approaching. So it's fine to just walk up to a random person, although very risky because you don't know how they're gonna feel about the union. You don't know if they're gonna talk to other people who have very negative feelings about the union and that something negative might happen that you haven't prepared for and that you don't know how to handle. So being organized and prepared um, is about, think about ahead of time, who's the most receptive person that you can talk to and talk to them when you both have time, not just who, but when it actually works for both of you, when you're on a break, when you have time to talk a little bit because you don't know how long this conversation will take. You also wanna be prepared in the sense of um, having not just the link, but materials. So we, because Crystal is a rock star, have a ton of very beautiful pamphlets that you can have on hand to send PDFs of since we are in COVID times. Just having materials that support what you're saying also can be really helpful for people to have, read on their own time later. They also look really legit and lovely. So that's that one. Think about ahead of time who, who you're talking to, where it's happening, what the situation is, and what else you can get, provide them with. Okay, so this next one is, right, working with other union members. Again, we've said this before, so if 100 people are asking, then hundreds of people will join. And if it's just you, that will be not only a big burden, but it won't get very far. So whoever is with you in that workplace situation that you're in, whoever can team up with you with the same target group of people that you're targeting, that's who you want to work with um, because that will get the work done faster and also you will feel so much better about it. You won't feel alone in it. And then the next point is something also we've said before, which is most of this, I think this was the first slide, most of this is listening. If you listen to people, they will usually tell you actually, directly or indirectly, what they think about joining the union when you're doing the introductions. You can get a sense for what their, that's the point, what their issues are um, and how they feel about the kind of thing that you're proposing. You can learn what concerns them. Um, you can also learn things like, are they a good person in their department to spread the union? Are they uh, maybe a natural leader? I mean, are they an activist in their department? How might they be situated to um, plug into us and help us, help the new us once they're part of the new us? All of that can come out of if you are listening to what they're saying during this conversation. 
And then the next point is the wonderful freeing point of just be yourself. We're, this is a super new union. None of us are super experts. Um, and that's totally okay. The thing that happens that's really great in a very successful first conversation like this is that you make a connection. And that comes from you speaking from the place that you're at, wherever that is at right now. If you just join, but you're super enthused and you're willing to talk to people about it, that's a great thing to open with. And that's totally fine. And it's not a problem if you don't know how to answer all of the questions that you'll be faced with, because you won't. That should, no one is that perfect. And if you hold yourself to that standard of knowing everything, it's really easy to get defensive when inevitably you don't know something. So just be yourself, accept that you will have some flaws and you will not know all of the things and be open um, and make that human connection. That's what that allows you to do. And the next one is ask. So this is, this is pretty obvious. You just have to ask. That has to be part of the conversation. Um, ask them to join, ask them why if they say no, be okay with a no, rejection is fine. It's a connection that you're making. And if they say no, you can find out why that is. If someone isn't ready to decide, you can find out what is keeping them from it, what future conversations you could have around it. Um, and that goes into our last point, which is to be persistent. So that's what that sets you up to do is, well, you didn't join now, which is fine. Most people don't join the first time they learn about the union, but you can continue to ask those people. And that shows them that their membership is important to you, that their participation is important to you, that the strength of the union depends on them being a part of it, which we know is true, right? So don't be discouraged, again, by people saying no. Um, uh, yeah, and that's the slide. That's our wrap up. And move on to our deep dive. Would someone read this slide for me, please? Uh, overcoming objections. Many people have initial reasons for not joining the union. Many people have not ever been asked to join or do not know there is a union. Some people have heard about the union, but nobody they know is active in it. Others don't understand or see the value in joining the union. These are the most common reasons people don't join. Here are some responses to common initial objections to joining the union. Thank you. Yes, these are really helpful to go over because like I said, you're probably not gonna know all of this off the top of your head, but having seen it and heard it and said it before and practiced it, when you hear those phrases again, you'll know that you already have an answer for that and it will key the kinds of things that you can say in response. So we're gonna go through a few of them. Will I get in trouble for joining? What they really mean is that they're scared. That's what that tells you. And this is the kind of stuff that you can say. This one is a doozy, but does someone want to read it? Uh, will I get in trouble for joining? What they really mean, I'm scared. How to respond? We are protected by both the federal and state constitutions and our efforts to organize, so it's illegal to retaliate. Importantly, we haven't seen anyone lose their job for organizing at any of the schools where UCW has been organizing for the past eight years all of them peer institutions. Another is that signing up to become a member is confidential and our members choose their level of involvement and the degree to which they want to be public for the union. Moreover, we, the union, would fight for them if the unlikely happened and they were targeted. You just brought up X issue. Is anything going to get better if we don't organize? Exactly, thank you so much. Yes, so they're scared. We have an answer for that. We're, as you saw in my conversation earlier, we're all a little scared because we all know that this is not risk-free and that's why we're doing it. Not because it's risk-free, but because it's important and we believe that we can do it together. So the next common objection um, is they can't afford to pay dues, which is also super real. What that really means is I'm not convinced the union is worth it, right? So what you can say to that is this. Would someone please like to read that? We all pay dues to have the resources to have organizers, lawyers, and everything we need to win change. They are on a sliding scale from $8 a month going up depending on how much you make. 
do you think the administration wants us to have a strong organization? Why not? Because if we do, we will win on issues like whatever issue they brought up. Still to feel tight on money, it's also real that this is a thing that's worth investing in. And since we have a sliding scale, the investment can be scaled to whatever it is. Um, the investment can be scaled to whatever it is that they are able to do at this time. And that's also really important about a union is that you don't have to come in and be like, rah, rah, all of my time and energy, all of my resources. Like it's really, it's for you. It's for you and what you're able to do and what you're worried about. And it's for all of us in that way. So the next two slides, those two are really common. The next two slides, I think we will skip so that we can get to the next part of this, but I don't need to join is something you'll also hear. Um, and that means not what it says because everyone needs to join. It means they're not convinced. Um, and, and you can re get to some of those points that you were using to convince them earlier to um, get past this objection. And then our last one, which we'll also breeze through is unions are corrupt. Uh, <laughs> what they mean is they watched Hoffa. <laughs> yeah, so unions are made of people and people are not great all the time. However, unions are also the most transparent kind of organization that you can be in. And if they're worried about corruption, they should join the union and make it not corrupt because the union is the people who are in it. If you're in the union and you're not corrupt, the union is not corrupt. That's how that works. Yes. So breezing through that one so that we can do it ourselves in breakout rooms. Looks like everybody's back, right? Excellent. Uh, if you're not here, say something. There you go. Um, okay, so one last thing we wanted to talk about real quick is how to organize during COVID. Um, I know in my breakout room, we talked about this a little bit um, in a sort of different way, but um, yeah, really the important things that I just want to highlight are that historically, a lot of these conversations are, are happening in person, right? But obviously we need to be safe, we need to be smart, we need to be careful. So um, setting up calls through Zoom, through FaceTime, just a phone call, um, being consistent, right? Um, that's one of the most important things is if you start this conversation with somebody, make sure that you are willing to continue the conversation. Um, and obviously things come up in life, life happens, but try your best to really be there so that if they ask you questions, if they have concerns, you're able to follow up with them, right? Um, and so that's sort of those, those first couple of points, right? Using text to follow up with people, be prepared to help people understand the online form, right? Um, I think most of us are probably using the online form if we've joined, right? So um, be, be ready to help someone out with that and sort of guide them through it. It's not super intuitive. I've had people ask me questions about security and stuff like that, but it's, it's, you know, it's a very secure system. It's being used by CWA in a number of different capacities. So, so it, it's, it's, it's good stuff, but make sure that you, you can help them out with that. Um, this, this point, this longer point here, talking about adapting the organizing conversation um, and preparing people to think about how to take action during this time as part of the inoculation step in the organizing conversation. Um, talk about workplace safety during agitation, right? You know, make sure that you are, are being topical, that you're being relevant to what's going on right now. Um, in, in one of my breakout rooms, we were talking about having to go off script. Um, and that's, you know, Ida made a point earlier about being yourself. That's what you do when you got to go off script, right? Be genuine, be real with people, um, and, and make sure that it's an actual organic conversation that you're having. And, and about what's going on right now. I think a lot of people have concerns about COVID. Um, and so that's, that's a perfect way to get people talking. Um, using digital tools like Slack or GroupMe, we have sort of elected to use Slack. Um, but yeah, that's just, be, be online, right? Um, keep, keep those conversations going, both with potential new members and also with the rest of the committees who are, who are trying to get people to be recruited. And then be creative about making actions, trainings, um, and being socially distanced. This one is, this, for, this is for all of us, right? Um, we can all find new ways to make things interesting without having just constant Zoom fatigue, right? So if you have ideas about things that we can do, bring them up. Uh, everything that we do is, is, is just about our members. So everybody's voice matters. And so we wanna make sure that everybody is bringing those ideas up. So, I think that's the end of the slides proper. So 
if anybody has any sort of questions, concerns, comments, things that came up in a breakout room that you thought were really good that you wanted to discuss more with a large group, um, now would be a really great time to, to bring those up. So I'm going to sort of open the floor up um, if anybody has anything that they wanted to talk about for a little bit. I just wanted to share that I felt shy during the role play. I think that it takes practice and I would appreciate looking over the script because I felt like there were things I wanted to say and when I was put on the spot, I didn't really say them. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why we were doing it, right? Um, so you could sort of feel that nervousness now and sort of in the moment. But we do, yeah, um, we do have resources that we can share. I think Crystal mentioned earlier that we will send out the slides to everybody. So you have all the information that we went over tonight. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we give everybody information and this meeting, you know, recorded so everybody can have access to everything that was going on tonight. Yeah, great, great point. I will just kind of piggyback off of that to say that the first few times you talk to someone are going to kind of suck. And I would just kind of acknowledge that and be okay with that because, you know, as we've said, like, it's not like a one and done thing. Um, you're not going to put people off the union through your bad ask. Usually people are already bringing in their own anxieties. And if it goes wrong, it's wrong as in they don't say yes right away. That's okay. Like there's other opportunities to keep at it, especially if it's someone you know. And I, on that note, I would highly recommend starting with someone you know and have some kind of workplace relationship with. Because um, it's so much less intimidating to ask a friend to join than it is to ask a total stranger. Yeah, like Evan says, if you've ever been door knocking, it's like that. But, you know, it's, it's easier because you know you'll see the person again and you get to follow up, which is helpful. So be forgiving. And usually people are forgiving of you, of you as well, because even if they don't say yes right away, I think they can usually tell it's, it's a big thing that you're doing and, and that you're asking them to do. I think you were asking in breakout room a question. I don't want to put you on the spot. So you were asking a question about lecturers, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess this is, um, I don't feel like I know or have had opportunities to meet lecturers. And I mean, like, this is getting to the point of, like, reach out to people you know. And there are other people in my department that I've signed up that, like, are, we're in conversation and trying to organize ourselves. But I just, um, you know, I, I don't want that burden of like reach, be reaching out to like, oh, that's a huge part of our department. And I don't want it to just like fall on the shoulders of like the person that amongst the four of us at this point right now, you know, has been around the longest. Um, and so I guess if anybody has any sort of like tips, advice, insights on reaching out to lecturers that you don't really have a relationship to and you know you don't want to like drop in on their office hours um i would appreciate that i'll just say i'll just say because um i i happen to have experienced uh this and and like and weirded out by uh visiting assistant people um because i don't know them usually if they're in that kind of job they're going to be more sympathetic because their job is in some ways even worse because um, they have a heavy teaching load probably. Um, they're try furiously trying to get work done so that they can apply to other jobs. Um, and so they're probably going to be more sympathetic even if you don't know them. Um, that's one thing I would say. Yeah, okay, sorry, I'll go real quick. Um, sort of on that too, I've, I've had to approach a couple of people who I didn't know at all. And in that time, I sort of like take on a very sort of official, hello, I'm representing the new union at University of Virginia sort of role. Um, so I feel like a lot of times, at least my experience, right, I either lean super into, I know you, let's have a conversation with people who know each other, mm. or I lean super into, I am here as a union organizer and a union member trying to talk to you about the union. Mm, right? mm, um, mm. And sometimes when you have that sort of gray area, just sort of picking a lane can be a mm. little, bit, little bit helpful, I find. Mm, that, um, yeah, that's... That is helpful. The thing I was going to add too is that that's a, like someone you don't know at all um, can be a harder target. So on the point of picking easier targets, when you have people who you do know who you can talk to, a great like next step thing that you guys can do together or work on together is they can tell you where to go next. 
and you can expand your ask network organically that way. And sooner or later, you'll get around to those other people. Or if you really want to target that person who you don't know and don't have any connections to, you can work your way backwards. Like, who do they talk to? Who does that person talk to? Who can I ask? And then work my way up through that also. That can be another strategy. Thank you for that. Another thing I found really helpful is having more than one person approach them at different times, maybe. So we usually in our history department mapping, we have for people we don't know as well, like professors and staff members, we have them do like a, a point person and then a, a follow up person. So the one person will make the ask, um, the initial ask, which is usually the kind of harder part or maybe prime them to like introduce the union and ask them what they think about the idea of joining. And another person can follow up later and it makes it seem like you're coordinated and you have numbers. Um, and that can sometimes help relieve the burden of one person having to do the kind of heavy lifting of, of getting to know this person, introducing them to the union at the same time. Hey, I had a question just about, um, you know, sort of recruiting people in general. Um, I think a lot of uh, folks, uh, a lot of folks I work with are older. Uh, you know, I'm in my mid thirties. A lot of people I work with are in their mid thirties, early to late. 60s um but with right to work and at will employment in place in virginia uh what are what are the teeth the union can use to directly benefit an employee so what why what why risk it what what's the benefit if i'm you know sitting in a house that i own what's my cost risk analysis I can start. Um, I, there are a lot of answers to this question, uh, different answers for yeah. different people. Uh, but one place to start is to reframe the, que the, the question. Um, because by saying, what is the benefit for me? I'm sitting in my own home. You're sort of um, already in the mindset of like, it's just me by myself. Uh, but we're in a collective enterprise. So we're trying to make the workplace better, not just for us, but for everyone else too. So the first place to start in talking about what the teeth are is that a lot of the things you mentioned, like the legislature and the laws in Virginia, are sort of the end stage goals, the like things we can do when we have the collective power to leverage. Right now we're in the process of building our power and like we can't do that if everyone is sitting around thinking, well, what's in it for me? Because in order to get to the point where we can start lobbying effectively, we need everyone to have a unified voice. So that's the first place I would go is to say, well, what you're talking about is sort of later on in the stage, something that we need to do when we're big and organized. And what we're doing right now is getting bigger and organizing. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good thing to emphasize is the kind of like collective enterprise building that you know with like you're important because we need you to help um, become stronger and we need you because you want to represent all the workers and all the divisions of UVA and your voice matters um, but at the same time um, the union is you um, the union does not kind of come down and tell you what to do or kind of you know do something for you the union is a vehicle through which you and your colleagues come together to fight for the things that you care about in your workplace. And I feel like no matter how comfortable or kind of stable folks are in, um, in their positions right now, uh, we, we all deal with the kind of sort of precarity hanging over us and we all, or, or people we care about in our workplace. Um, and I think going to that space in a way that that's not really not to, to scare anyone, but maybe to remind them of the stakes, that there are things to be worried about before you join or if you never join or if there's never a union. Um, and that, you know, the kind of potential risks of joining, um, and everyone has to make this decision for themselves, obviously, this is a personal call, that the potential risks of joining, I think, for me, and for a lot of people who are here outweigh, or are, are outweighed by the, the benefits of having this kind of collective power. Um, and so going to that space of like, you know, the risks are, are worth it, and the stronger and the more organized we get, the safer we can keep one another are usually good ways to, to approach that question. Yeah, and just to, to jump on that a little bit more, um, one of the things that I've, I've heard from other people and like to do myself is to sort of emphasize, well, yeah, these are the things that happen without a union, right? 
So once we start banding together and organizing, we can stop some of these things from happening, right? We can make things safer for ourselves. Um, and so, yeah, so like sort of take that risk and twist it back and be like, this is what happens when we haven't been organized, right? Wouldn't we like to make that better? Um, and that's sort of, that's sort of a, a strategy that I like to try to throw in there a little bit. Yeah. Um, as much as I would love to hear more folks' uh, questions and stuff, we are sort of approaching the end of the time window that we had set aside. So I do want to give us a little bit of concluding thoughts um, and sort of a wrap up for the evening. So uh, one thing that Susan had brought up, right, was talking about talking to people who you don't really know. Well, one of the things that we do to try to help alleviate the situation is mapping, right? Um, trying to map our departments, trying to map our workspaces. This is just getting people's names and contact info. But as Crystal mentioned earlier, talking about having a nice chart, trying to organize information, trying to get a sense of people's relative sympathy towards the cause of unionization, right? If we know that there's a certain subset of people who are pretty strongly anti-union, we can leave them for later, right? Let's try to get some more folks who are already leaning towards our side first. So mapping is, again, it's just having conversations. But it also then, like Crystal just put in the chat, charts are our friends, right? We can use these charts and use these maps to help guide further efforts to try towards recruitment. So I mentioned earlier that like we need to be using these sort of online tools for communication, right? And I mentioned that we use, we, we use Slack a lot. Um, and so one thing that I'd like to do is invite everybody to, if you haven't already, join our Slack workspace, which now is going to require me to go and, and actually pull up that link real quick. Um, this is a teachable ahead. moment. This is what happens when you don't have the link ready. This is what happens when you don't have the link ready. Yes, right? You. you have to sort of uh, vamp a little bit. But I just put the link to the Slack in the, in the Zoom chat real quick. Um, and, and I tried to put together a greet bot earlier today, so hopefully that works if you haven't already been in, in Slack. But within right. Slack, we do have a couple of channels, one of which is for recruitment. So if you like what you've been hearing tonight and you want to help make a difference and help recruit more people, I am officially inviting you to join our recruitment Slack channel um, and sort of get on board with that and sort of, we can then share resources, right? It's not just going to be like, okay, Stephen, today you have to go recruit 10 people, right? It's going to be sort of, Stephen, how have you been doing? What can we help with? Um, let's talk about some of the concerns, right? Evan puts in the Slack, we can provide department lists. We have been trying to help map people's departments as well. Um, so yeah, we, we, have, we have data. We can help. Um, so so that's, that's something really exciting as well. Um, and yeah, just sort of keep in touch. Um, we are all the people who helped organize this call tonight are all super happy to talk to anybody about these things. Um, and something that I want to do, um, also hospital departments. I can't really necessarily speak to the data that we have on the hospital departments right now. Um, we're working on it. We're working on it. I can speak yeah. to it. We've started mapping hospital departments. It is a kind of large endeavor, so it's slow going. So if you know people or you yourself would be willing to help with that, I feel like we've maybe gotten through only a couple so far. Um, I, would, I would love to help with that. Yes. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I, I love thinking about the hospital as a system, I'd, and I also like charts. So this sounds ideal. The perfect intersection. <laughs> <laughs> But sort of as like a, a sort of like call to action thing to wrap up our time together tonight. I would like everybody to take a moment and think about three people that you know at your workplace, who you interact with fairly regularly, that you can now talk to about potentially joining our union, right? Um, and sort of make a mental note, make a physical note, whatever you'd like to do, and, and try to find some time this week to introduce this concept to them, talk to them about it. If you've already started the conversation, keep it going, right? Be persistent. Um, invite them to our meeting on Monday, because we are we're having a, a, a nice general meeting on Monday, where we're going to hopefully be able to talk to, about a lot of issues and talk to a lot of issues. Um, and as sort of an extra added little sprinkle on top, um, UCW is shipping us a set of masks that we have decided people who recruit three members to the union can get a free mask. Um, and there's a limited number of those, so don't make that promise to everybody. 
but that's just sort of something that we're trying to throw out there to help get those get those recruitment drives going. Um, so yeah, um, we do not have picks yet. That's correct. But everything that UCW has done for us so far has been extremely cool. So I have no reason to believe that this is going to be any different. Um, and with that, um, if anybody has any other closing thoughts, questions, concerns, comments, violent reactions, anything else, um, I think I think that's about it. Um, feel free to um, in the Slack. DM me at any point. Um, I know a couple of the other people who are here would love to also, I'm not going to speak for them, but um, you know, a bunch of us happy to talk about anything. And like I said, check out those channels, join the appropriate channels that you think you'd be interested in and, and talk to us. So there you go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for giving us your Monday evening. Yeah, thanks for coming out on a Monday evening. We appreciate it. Uh, can, I, can I go ahead for a real second? Yeah, Evan, go ahead. Thank you. Um, if you have any, um, please, please uh, share your experiences. Like if, um, if something came up that we didn't address in this uh, training, or if like you had a really good experience, experience or a really bad experience of talking to someone, share it. It'd be great. Um, I think it'd be really helpful to have like that real life um, example.